And we continue to be Zion's Bees Evangelical Lutheran Church under many different roofs, but always embraced as part of the body of Christ by the grace of our risen Lord. Our meditation music this morning, played by Sandy, is Lord of Light. For a quiet reflection, you can look at the picture of the Forsythia if you can see the screen. Uh, if not, just imagine some of the beauty of spring and new life that Christ uh, reminds us of coming out of the darkness. We lay our burdens down and are lifted up by the inspiration, that in-breathing of the peace of Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Please respond with me. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And it is good news worth repeating, so we're going to repeat it because it's important. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ is, risen, is risen, indeed. risen indeed. Alleluia. Our hymn is in the ELW, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship 369. Those of you that have your, your red hymnals, hymn 369. The words will also be on the screen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.
line and, and maybe she needs to do that and get to the root Just cause. reminder, if you're not uh, speaking or uh, leaving at this time, please mute. Vice President of the United States. Mute that. You have a powerful voice, whether you agree with that. Today, uh, after you're muted, we'll pray the prayer of the day together. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For Bible readings, and I neglected to invite someone to be a lector. If you're interested in being a lector, I invite you to unmute at this time. But our readings will be from Acts 4, Psalm 133, both the letter of 1 John chapter 1, and from the Gospel of John chapter 20. I will read, Pastor. Oh, thanks very much, Chris. Hey. Can you see the, is the screen big enough? Oh, yep, I can. All right. And the first lesson is from Acts 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. Amen. Second reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have communion with us. And truly our communion is with the Father and with Jesus Christ, the Son. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have communion with God while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have communion with one another and the blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar and God's word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thank Thanks you. Thanks to God. And thank you, Chris, for reading us these parts of the scriptures. You're welcome. Our gospel today is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory thank to you, you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, that would have been Easter, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Praise to you, O Christ. It's still empty. We have a treasure box in the sanctuary that used to have the word Alleluia tucked up inside for that whole season of Lent when we put away the praises and we reflect a little bit in quietness. But now the news is out. That tomb is empty. It changes a lot. One thing it doesn't change though, it does not change the fact that Jesus still carries his wounds. As Professor Matt Skinner of uh, Luther Seminary in Minnesota said, the resurrection does not erase the crucifixion. That's something that we're gonna focus on a little bit today. But first, as a children's message, as a mini message, uh, since we are all children of God, I'm going to ask you if any of you recognized any parts of our worship service in the scriptures that Chris read for us today. If you have a camera, if your camera's on, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you recognized any of the words uh, that Chris read as part of uh, a typical uh, liturgical worship service. Anybody? Oh my gosh, a couple. That's cool. What were some of the words that, that stuck out? Maybe you were afraid to raise your hand because you knew I was going to ask that question. The confession? Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I think it's important for us to, to remember, uh, especially when we have a liturgy, <clears throat> excuse me, that we repeat the same words uh, over and over for a good chunk of the church year. It's important to remember those words are not made up by people that are wonderful poets. Uh, they're not made up by people who make hymnals, but they actually come straight out of the scriptures. So much of our worship service does come straight out of the scriptures. And so it really is uh, important to be reminded as we're listening to the scriptures, uh, how much of them we do know. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know the Bible so well. But then you start singing some of the hymns that Sandy has picked, or we start hearing some of the scriptures from parts of the Bible that we might not read frequently. And gosh, wouldn't you know it, there's some words that become very, very familiar. And the words for today, as Chris pointed out, our confession remind us uh, that there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ, not only for ourselves, but also through ourselves to others. Is there anyone who's feeling particularly young at heart today? Not the people that have COVID. They were feeling young at heart, but are too tired to think about it right now. Well, then I'll, I'll say, uh, say a prayer this way. Lord God, please continue to fill us, your children, with wonderment. Please help us to continue to read the Bible and to become familiar with your message of love and grace and forgiveness with your message of how to be neighbors and friends to one another. Please continue to guide us this Easter season to celebrate that empty tomb and the promise that you are with us always. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. 
If you hear whining, my dog is really rather put out that he's on the other side of a gate from us today. So I, I might be moving this, this location. I think I am. Excuse me, you're gonna get a little change of perspective on the room that Sandy and I are in. <laughs> that is not part of the sermon by any means. But no, I can't. Um, but it is it is related a little bit with the uh, the sermon today. You'll notice that um, the Gospel of John begins on Easter evening itself. And are the disciples outside celebrating? No. It's not a trick question. No, they're inside. Uh, how many of you are inside today? Raise your hand up if you're inside. I see no umbrellas, so there should be a lot of hands. All right, we're inside. And I would have to guess that some of us are inside with a little bit of fear. Now, I don't think any of us are worried about being crucified. And that's the kind of fear that the disciples had. They were locked inside out of fear because Jesus, just those few days before, had been arrested and tortured and tried and convicted, sentenced to death, and executed. And they thought they were next. Now, we don't know why Thomas was not with them that night, but there could be a lot of different reasons. Jesus came and stood among them that night. And he said those words that we hear so often in the scriptures. Peace be with you. What an important message in a time of fear and a time of isolation. And you know, the next week, Jesus came back. Were they outside celebrating yet a week later after Easter? No. They were still terrified. They were still locked inside. They were still feeling isolated. They were still feeling persecuted. And I'd like to lift up, I've, I've had a couple conversations recently with people who've said, um, you know, I used to believe, but I'm not so sure that I'm a believer in Christ anymore. And when I say why, they have different answers, but a general theme has been because I'm doubting a little bit or because I'm afraid, or because I'm not seeing any signs, and I'd really like to see some signs of what God is up to in the world. And I'd like to pull out of this gospel the message that Jesus has for people who are doubting and people who are asking questions about how God works in the world and people who are afraid. Did you notice that Jesus does not mock Thomas? Jesus does not turn his back on Thomas. In fact, Jesus comes to be among the disciples, not only Thomas, and he addresses the question that Thomas has, and he allows Thomas to touch the wounds that he carries with him, because remember, the resurrection does not erase the crucifixion, Jesus brings his wounds and his gift of healing to the others who are still wounded, who are still doubting, who are still scared, and who still wonder what on earth is going on. Jesus comes right among them, embraces them with all their doubts and all their fears and all their wondering and their shortcomings, and he stands among them and proclaims peace be with you again. It's a gift of forgiveness. Jesus comes and meets the disciples exactly where they are. And I strongly believe that that is still happening today. So people who are doubting, Christ is still here. Christ is among us. Christ is showing us the way. Christ is showing us his wounds. Christ is embracing us with our wounds and our shortcomings and our fears and our doubts and our isolation and still makes us community. In fact, Christ sends those fearful disciples 
And he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Christ takes those fearful, doubting, cowering people and makes them the body of Christ in the world, giving them his authority. We have that too as children of God, as a community of Christians. Regardless of where we are or how we're feeling, we too are given the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ to give that forgiveness, to give that encouragement, and to ask the questions when we have doubts, to be in that together. Even if we're under different roofs, we have the ability to share this message with one another, whether it's in a virtual way, or dropping off a card to somebody, or picking up a phone to say hello to somebody. We have an opportunity to share the scriptures, we have an opportunity to share God's love, and we have an opportunity to share God's forgiveness, not only with ourselves and our own lives, but with others too. So Christ makes us, the body of Christ, that community of believers, inclusive of all our doubts and all our scrapes and all our scars and all our wondering. So please know that Christ continues to be with us. Christ continues to guide us forward. And we don't have to be perfect. Christ takes care of that part. He just asks us to be faithful, to be followers, and to share this good news wherever we go. So may, may we be inspired, uh, inspired meaning full of breath, right? In, it's put into us, inspire is breath. That's what Christ does. He breathes on his followers and gives them the Holy Spirit. And we have been given that holy breath as well to be inspired as followers of Jesus Christ in each and every day and all the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for being with us regardless of our fears or our doubts or our questions. And in fact, meeting those fears and doubts and questions. Please help us to also not only forgive ourselves and to believe, but to help others on this journey as well. Thank you for being the kind of God that goes to all lengths to make us your own, to make us your children, to fill us with your peace and your Holy Spirit. Please help us to share that wherever we are, wherever we go, whether we're scared and locked inside or emboldened, and outside. Please, Lord, direct our steps and direct our days in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is Thine is the Glory. It is in the red hymnal 376. 376, thine is the glory.
you don't know how to share the good news, that hymn is certainly a wonderful way to start. Please join me as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just a moment to, uh, to be in the sanctuary of Zion Spies Evangelical Lutheran, uh, recognizing the joy of Easter and the new life of the lilies. Wherever we are, God is with us and that becomes our sanctuary today. We pray from our sanctuaries. On this second Sunday of Easter, let us pray for all in any need, responding to each petition with the words, send us your peace, O God. We pray. O faithful God, grant the joy of your peace to our pastors, to all those who minister among us, to all the baptized, especially during times of hardship. Help us to support one another's churches, to cease rivalries, to strengthen our ecumenical contacts. Hear our prayers for the church. Send, Send us your peace, O oh God. Grant the beauty of your peace to all of nature, its springtime flowers, its wildlife, its terrains. Restore waters, cleanse the air, save lands that have been misused. Inspire us to care for the whole of your creation. Hear our prayers for the earth. Send us your peace, O oh God. Grant the power of your peace to the nations of the world. Halt all impulses toward violence between nations in our city streets and inside our homes. Lead our government into wise decisions concerning migrants, especially the youth. Bring an end to ethnic prejudices in our land and guide judges and juries to enact justice throughout each court proceeding. Hear our prayers for this country. Send us your peace, O God. Grant the abundance of your peace to all agencies of care in church and government. Show us the best ways to uphold and support those in need. Inspire children to share. Open our hearts to a world so filled with suffering and make us always more generous with the gifts you have given us. Hear our prayers for a world of goodwill. Send us your peace, O oh God. Mm -hmm. Grant the well being of your peace to all who suffer. Visit all who are ill, especially those suffering from COVID 19, those without access to the vaccines, those with strained medical resources. Comfort with your merciful presence those who are distanced from family and friends, all who are lonely or distressed, those who are deployed far from home, those who are not able to get home. Receive our prayers, especially for 128 million people who have been and are afflicted with COVID-19 around the world, including Hannah, Greg, May, school students, staffs and families, Ron, Cindy, through our prayers for the sick, send us your peace, O oh God. Grant each of us the hope that comes with your peace. Comfort each of us in sorrow and receive our silent requests. Hear us as we pray for ourselves. Send us your peace, O oh God. Lord, we, prepare, we pray for all those preparing for surgery and those healing from surgery and hospitalization, including Bobby, whose surgery was postponed, for Paul, Jim, Larry, Ray, and John, for those with chronic conditions, including Barbara and Ben, 
John R, Silka, John T, John H, Bill M, Pauline, William R, Mike, Jim B, Norman, Kathleen, Dorothy, Mike S, Linda, Brian, June, Tucker. For those on hospice and comfort care, including Ronald, Diane, Nancy, Evelyn, and those we name in our hearts. For others, including all those living through violence and trauma and hatred, for myself and Anthony, for survivors of tornadoes, for Adrian and Nick in this pregnancy, for John, Kathy, and Greg, for students returning to school, including Adam, for DECA's smelter and safety teams, for Denise, Jack, Dawn, Cindy and Scott, for Betty, Susie, for Richard, for Tammy as she awaits an appointment, for Shirley as she goes to her appointment this week, for Anna E, for Rachel, for Sandy, for Anna W, for Mick, Accompany all who face troubles and sorrows, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for your words to Isaiah, to Paul, to Peter, to Mary Magdalene, to the women at the tomb, and to each one of us. Receive now, we pray, our silent prayers, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for embracing your people with the wounded arms, your wounded arms, Christ. We bless you for all who have died in the faith. At the end of all things, bring us with them into your everlasting peace, including the 2.6 million people who have died of COVID-19, those who've died in recent storms and flooding, those who've died in recent violence, including Officer Billy Evans, people of Orange County, California, Boulder, Colorado, Atlanta, Georgia, and over 200 other violent altercations in this past week. We pray for those who've died in other ways, including Jeff, a nephew of Mary, for Dennis, husband of Barbara, for Fern, mother of Barbara, for Janice, for AJ, for Barb, for Claudia, Marcel, for Sam, for Rick's mom, for the Reading High senior killed in a car accident, for Grace, who took her own life, and John. Here are our prayers for life beyond our understanding. Send us your peace, mm -hmm. O oh God. In praise for the new life you grant us in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy living and loving God, we praise you for creating an earth of splendor, for making us into a people of your own. With all the saints who have received your word, we worship you, holy God. We worship you, holy God. Blessing and guiding spirit, we praise you that in the midst of chaos and questions, you lead us away from evil and lead us into renewed life and hope. You give us love and guidance in daily life toward healthy living. We thank you, God, for celebrations in our family of faith, for Grayson's birth, for Bella's puppies, for folks getting vaccines, for children returning to school full time, for Amanda and her fiance receiving a letter, uh, giving them an LLC for their new business, even as she's starting uh, with our congregation. For birthdays, including John and Lisa and Dee belatedly. For anniversaries, including William and Jean. We thank you, God, for healing, including that of Richard and Elaine G, Fancy B, Z.E., Nicholas, Donald and Elaine N, Judy, Darlene, 
and beloved dogs Lassie and Poppy. Receive our thanks also for restoration of land and living after fire and flood, ice, storm, volcano, snow, and landslide. Thank you for approved COVID vaccines and all who produce, ship, administer, and receive them around the globe. We thank you for manna moments, a flower, a mask, a smile, a helping hand, a hand-delivered card, a listening ear, sunshine for the longer parts of each day, and best of all, an empty tomb. Oh God, you invite us to walk with you. Savior, hear our praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for your eternal word, for conquering the force of death, for raising us up through the resurrection of our Lord. For your word alive among us, we praise you, living God. We praise you, living God. Breathe the spirit of the risen Christ on us, that led by your word, we may honor your earth and its many people and serve all who are in need. For your word animating, inspiring our Easter life, we bless you, loving God. We bless you, loving God. All worship, praise, and blessing be to you, source of life, ruler of life, and power of life, today and forever. Amen. Gathered into one, that unified body that the psalmist wrote of by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace in the name of the creator, savior, and sustainer, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is Christ is Risen, Alleluia. It is in the Red Evangelical Lutheran Worship 382. Hymn 382, Christ is Risen, Alleluia.
Praise God, y'all. Christ is risen from the dead. We continue to worship together on Saturdays at 6 and Sundays at 9. And I wish you, uh, if I can speak for Sandy and I, I wish you a happy Easter from all of us who are staff and serving the, the people of Zion. And encourage you to continue telling the good news of Jesus and his love. And thank you for the ways that you're sharing the blessings that God's given you financially uh, as we continue to give uh, to God's glory and to further this ministry of telling others of Jesus and his love. For those who can't see the screen, there's a picture of the beautiful pyramid on the pulpit with the sand dollar right in the center and the Cairo growing out of it that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay. And the crown of thorns around that. It's beautiful. Uh, thank you all. So we do have a closing meditation. But before that, uh, just thanks. I'll read off the Easter flowers for those who can't see the screen. Um, they were beautiful. There's a picture up on the screen um, of the, the cross draped with a, a white triumphant cloth reminiscent of the cloth that was folded up, not around Jesus, because he rose from the dead. And thanks again to Susie for setting up the flowers, uh, to Mary for being willing to be in the picture with, uh, with Magic and Susie. And we remember her Bridegum and the family, as reminded by Jean, for our grandparents, Marvin and Irma Stoner and George Stufflet by Tracy, Mike, and Philip Ferrero. For Irma and Marvin Stoner and George Stufflet by Cheryl and Philip Hess. For our granddaughter, Mackenzie Rose Matthews by Cheryl and Philip Hess. For our niece, Mackenzie Rose Matthews by Aunt Tracy, Uncle Mike, and Philip. Of our parents and our grandparents by Chris and Dee Keller, of Mary Knox, and Dave Wartloft, and 2020 the, uh, from the Knox family, our parents, Jay and Betty Snoke and Oliver Degler, Dennis and Luann Snoke, for those lost during COVID-19 by Mary Schwartz, for David and Michael Wingert by Anna Wingert. And in honor of those gone home by the Mel family, in honor of Ben and Hannah and ministry together by Bill and myself, to the glory of our risen Lord by Susie and Earl Blankenbiller. And for all of us, we give thanks to be able to be the Church of Christ together. That is our sending meditation music today, the Church of Christ. And the picture is two lambs feeding at the base of a shepherd's crook in the shape of the cross from the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is the beginning and the end. Reminded the Church of Christ in every age. I just wanted to let you know there are two funerals this week. If you would please keep the families in your prayers. The first is for Fern Irvin. I want to tomorrow. Um, Fern is a member of Trinity Warnersville. Uh, their pastor actually is going to be at her own dad's funeral on Monday. So I'm covering um, for their congregation tomorrow. And on Tuesday, is the funeral for Dennis Hill. Uh, that will be down at Stitzel. So if you'd like to uh, pay respects or uh, be aware of that, service is on Tuesday morning down at Stitzel. So please do keep folks in your prayers. I'm gonna stop the, uh, the recording at this time.